Hey guys, today we are going to take a look at the history of planeswalkers as well as their prices. And it is quite interesting to see some of them today. First, let's start off with Nahiri, is a $15 planeswalker still. Not, no longer a tier 1 modern deck ever since Death Shadow became the deck to beat. It's a little too slow. And Death Shadow is, has too many outs for that type of Nahiri Emiko deck. But nonetheless, still a really good $15 card. A Johnny Mentor of Hero, still $14. Surprising price tag on that one. Liliana Vess, one of the better cards for EDH, $7. Uh, and Nissa. $7.50 for something that was reprinted recently in a dual deck. Next you have Jace, the regular Jace at $7.98, Tamiel, Field Researcher at $7.97, and towards the lower end you have Chandra Pyro Master, which I think is a really good one, at $2.60, the dual deck version of Jace AOT at $2.62, and the original version of Jace AOT at 272 towards the least valuable planeswalkers of all time. Then you have Sarkhan, the Dragon Speaker at 225. And the the planeswalker that is worth the least is Duretti Scrap Savant at 216. But you can see there's plenty of planeswalkers that are less valuable than Tilbolt, including Tilbolt from the reprint version. From the dual, dual deck. Uh, Sarkon the Dragon Speaker is really interesting at that price point. Yeah, it's in weird colors, but still, $2 card. It's crazy. You got Tamiyo at 19 Gideon Ally of Zendikar, still in standard at 19 Gideon Trials at 18 Lily at 17 A Johnny Goldmane at 8 57 That one's not bad. And... All the way down to original Liliana Vest at only $8. A lot of these Planeswalkers, as you, as you can see, are very similar in price depending on the editions. And as we talk about cheaper Planeswalkers, we also have um, Nyxless and Domri, as well as Chandra Pyogenless and Dovin Bon Bane is $3. So the ones that are particularly of interest to me are the ones under $5, mainly because it does not take very much for them to go up in price. And there's a few good ones. I, I like Dovin because I think he's okay. Domi Rod is really good for $3. Like, I know he has a recent reprint in Modern Masters 2017, but it would not surprise me if he turns out to be one of those cards that increases in price two years from now. The other interesting one is Liliana of Dark Realms. I like that one at $7.79. I think that's an extremely good price for a Planeswalker that is unique. And uh, overall, just a very strong, strong Planeswalker. So, Tamil Field Researcher is also an interesting one to me. Uh, it's A lot of these cards... I, I just believe there's too many Planeswalkers. Every set has like a bunch of them and now we have introduction decks. But you can find a gem. One of these Planeswalkers, planeswalkers will spike in price. I have no doubt about that. So let's take a look at the slightly more expensive ones. You got Ugin the Spear Dragon at $34. Practically the only card in a... I guess you have Monastery Mentor and Fate Reforged Wharf Money as well. You got Chandra, Torch of Defiance, still holding steady at $21, which is odd. And you have a Johnny Goldman. I think we talked about that already. The little um, M's mean the promotional versions. So Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, San Diego Comic Con 2016, Jace, uh, Jace Living Guild Pack. These are all interesting ones uh, that. It's a little pricey, and I don't particularly find them collectible, in my opinion. I know they are very limited in scope, and they look 
different, but overall, uh, you, you have to find a certain buyer who's going to want to pay out the nose for a uniquer copy. So when we look at Tezzeret and Anjani on yielding, that's interesting. Vraska, I feel like is very, very good in EDHs and she is being, she just never got her time in the spotlight and then she got put in a dual deck. So that was, that was like the worst case scenario for her. But I do like Vraska at $3.84. A lot of these planeswalkers, like if you had to make a game where you had to guess what the planeswalkers were in terms of uh, value, you you couldn't come up with this list, right? Uh, I do like a Johnny on yielding. It's, uh, if the meta goes his way, I think it's going to be a very good card. And I do like Elspeth Sun's champion. That one has gone up considerably in price since uh, we last saw it. So let's talk about the almost the most expensive ones. You got Karn Liberated at 62 with his Modern Masters version at 63. Very, very cool prices on that one, especially if you were able to get in on him very cheap. It turns out that even reprinting him that didn't really dampen his price all that much. You also have Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace used to be a $100 Planeswalker. I remember that maybe it was like 100 maybe 90 And since this time, he's just been reprinted in from the Vault, Internal Masters, and then he has the original, uh, original version. One of the Planeswalkers that is surprisingly expensive, this Planeswalker was one of those that at the lowest hit $5, is Narset. You guys know I love Narset. And it's nice to see her at $11. Some other surprising planeswalkers, Cough of the Hammer. That one is more pricey than most people would have expected. And Elspeth Sun's Champion. I, I like those two quite a bit. At the $5 level, you have Sorin, Lord of Innistrad. Very good for token strategies. And Xenagos at four seventy three, which is a good one. So when we talk about, oh, you also have Sorin Solemn Visitor, which is also a good token one. There are plenty of interesting speculations in the Planeswalker because they are very unique. And if, let's imagine we had a minus one, minus one Planeswalker. That card was shot through the roof with the Amaket, but unfortunately we don't have one that really does that ability. Um, or has a additional benefit for it. So as we go up the chain of expensive planeswalkers and we go past Jace, the Jace from the vault or 20 is actually more expensive than any of the other Jaces, including the regular Jace. So we have Lilia 80 from Eternal Masters. Her version of Innistrad original is 87. Very very pricey cards. One of the Planeswalkers I did not see as being as expensive as he currently is, is Garuk Apex Hunter, or Apex ha Predator. This one, I believe, is the black green one, which is seven, and <laughs> when I looked at it, it was slight, meh, I don't know why. I guess people really like to kill the Planeswalker abilities, especially in the ED8s. You do have a Johnny Steadfast, one of my favorite ones. I remember that one being 6 or $7 recently, and now it has gone up in price. Planeswalkers are interesting. Um, they are something where the prices go up and down, and there's very cheap versions of them. I, If you are into trading, I no longer trade, sell, or buy many Magic cards anymore. I may buy, like, bulk. I don't know why, because I guess like I don't have to pay... In Houston, if you wanted to pay for a, let's say a U-Haul room rental, like a, just the smallest room, it's $75 a month. And I didn't want to like upgrade the bigger room, but now I own a home so I can buy as much bulk as I want and just kind of keep it there to look at, I guess. I also got a new couch, which is nice. So I can put my bulk on the new couch. Okay, so what was I talking about? Planeswalkers, if I had, was a trading person, 
I would stock up on the cheap planeswalkers because the cheap planeswalkers are at all time lows and they are very easy and very liquid. One of the things I care most about is how liquid the card is. If a card is liquid, that means people want it and casual people people will trade for it. Maybe they will give you good deals for that planeswalker. Planeswalkers are very good for EDHs, casual players. Planeswalkers are very good for ca kitchen table players, which are different from EDH players. So if I had $200, I would stock up on just a variety of planeswalkers under $5, put them in trade binder and then try to trade up. That's actually an interesting series. I don't know if I should make that. I don't know. That's actually pretty interesting now that I think about it. Kind of like a pack to power type of deal, except you start with $200 of planeswalkers. But anyway, let's take a look. We have uh, some special limited editions. We have Ugin, 125, which is pretty good. Jace Bellerin, which I believe is the book promo at 112. You have Liliana of the Veil, which is the GP foil promo. Chandra Pyromancer. This one is kind of expensive, right? The regular Pyromancer is very cheap. I wonder why this one is $146. This seems like the big oddity in all the Planeswalkers we went over. And you have Kea, Ghost Assassin, which is every single foil Kea has the alternative art. So it's pretty much just a foil. And if, is that correct? Someone correct me if I'm is that's not true but i believe every single foil ko ghost assassin has the ghost the foil uh, you have jace memory adapt at the promo version and you have a lot of really interesting uh, cards like gideon jora is pretty good it was hyped because of gideon trials which didn't happen and you even have Sahili Ra at $6.73. If she hits five, I think it's a good buy because she is very strong. Now, I do know that Feldon Guardian is banned, obviously, but maybe it's playable in modern. Like, it doesn't have to be a great deck. It just has to be, like, okay for it to be more than $5. Anyway, leave me a comment below of what plane talkers that you guys want to spec on and why. Bye, guys.